Okay, so into Photoshop, the first thing we're going to want to do with our layers is align them. So we're going to go to Auto Align Layers just to make sure there wasn't any shift between the exposures or the tone mapping didn't adjust things a little bit. It looks like they're pretty much spot on, which is cool. All right, so now we need to pick what we want. Actually, they weren't. They were a little bit off. So that we're not going to need at the moment. This is going to be our background plate. This is the one we like. So now we need to add our bird in. And I kind of like to do this a little bit backwards. We're going to create an image mask here, or layer mask. And we're going to paint our bird out of this. And we're going to paint his shadow out. There we go. Now we can click on our layer mask and control I to invert it. So now we just need to clean up the bird a little bit. It's got a halo around it, but that's easy enough. So now we can just paint around the bird. And this is very quick and dirty, but you can kind of get the idea. Okay, so now we have bird up there. Might clean up the layer mask on the ground a little bit. Less important because it blends in a little bit better. Use a softer brush, just kind of feather it in a little bit. All right, there we go. That's pretty good. And let's see here, we might be able to do something with this. Let's turn this layer on, make it, say, a hard light or a soft light, maybe. Hmm, I might need to include it a couple times. Hard light, what about a vivid light? Nope, way too much. All right, so for now, we'll use a hard light. will drop our opacity of our brush very low. Now we can paint in a little bit of that hard light from our original very underexposed image. And it's adding a little bit of contrast to our clouds, a little bit of darkness, and a little bit of extra color in there. Just have to be very light with it because it's pretty extreme. Okay, so that's not too bad. It lets us see a little bit more into the cloud. A couple places that I want to remove it to actually let it blow out a little bit. Right around there. And now I just clean up layer mask quite a bit. And now we'll do a second version of this. Delete layer mask. How does that look? We'll experiment. Okay, this one might add some more color and vividness to the sand. So we'll do a similar kind of deal on here, where we'll now create a layer mask and paint that in. Okay. Yeah, so it adds a little bit of extra color a little bit more saturation, just kind of like what it's doing. All right, so now we can clean up the image just a little bit. We've got a baseline going. So our cleanup is pretty much going to be a lot of spot healing. Oops, didn't want to do that. For things that are in the sand that we don't really want or care about. 
And because this is sand, the spot healing brush will probably do a very good job at removing things, which is very nice for us. We could clone it out, but spot healing just makes it easy. Like that didn't quite work. So I have to be a little bit more delicate with that. Yeah, I would clone that out if I wanted to spend the time. And we could probably actually remove the birds. Uh, maybe not that one, but that one, that one, that bird. It's not more. So we're just cleaning up the image. Some of the stuff is just noise. Okay, that's a little bit better. So now I think I want this side of the image a bit warmer. So we'll create a photo filter. Give that quite a bit of density. We're going to invert our layer mask. Going to go with our brush pretty lightly again. Let's paint over on this side of the image that was a little bit darker, a little bit cooler than the rest of the sunset. Just kind of gives a little bit of an orange tone, just to warm it up, just enough. So now we could also, if we wanted to lighten up our birds here, we could do a brightness adjustment layer, kind of lighten things up a lot, invert that, then same deal, paint that guy in with a layer mask. Now your eye is just drawn just a little bit to that bird. We'll lighten up our driftwood just a hair, maybe our kelp. So that just kind of wakes up the bird. And layer mask is dirty there, I would clean that up. So what else can we do? If we wanted to add a lot more contrast to this image in certain places, we could create a shadow map. So let's do that for demonstration purposes. Control alt shift e will merge all visible layers. And now we're going to put that in a group. We're actually going to put that group in another group, just because I like doing this easier. All right, so now we're going to want a black and white filter. There's a black and white filter. And this is only applied to I did a clipping mask, so it's only applied to our merged layer. Now we're going to create another one with our levels, and we're just going to make this extreme contrast. So I have extreme contrast everywhere in this image. And now we can turn this to hard light. And it does some really kind of cool and crazy stuff when the opacity is very low and painted in in very specific places. So now we create a layer mask on this. We're going to invert that. And we'll start painting in a little bit of this shadow map. totally kicks the sand up to 11. But it takes a little bit of the saturation out, so I kind of want to remove it in a few places where it killed our saturation just a little bit too much. Let's wipe this again. I want to add a little bit of a brightness mask to our bridge. Oops. And now you can kind of get an idea of how I put this image together. I hope this inspires you to go out and take some sunset photos and explore beyond the dynamic range of your sensor into the realm of HDR. Sometimes the images you're able to capture are really incredible. So have fun. I hope you found this helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. Otherwise, like and subscribe. Thank you. Bye.